Hey everyone, today we're doing today's Leco Daily Walking Robot Simulation. If you guys are liking the content you're watching, please do like, comment, and subscribe to show your support. A robot on an infinite XY plane starts at point zero zero facing north. Let's draw this out. So robot initially on point zero zero facing north. The robot could receive a sequence of these three possible types of command. We have minus two, which means turn left, minus one, which means turn right, and then we have a number from one through nine, which is move forward K units. We have K units, one at a time. Some of the grid squares are obstacles. The ith obstacle is at grid point obstacles of I, X, I, Y, I. The robot runs into an obstacle then it will instead stay in its current location and move on to the next command. Return the maximum Euclidean distance that the robot ever gets from the origin square. So if the distance is 5, return 5 squared or 25. Okay, so let's take an example to a better drive home what the problem's asking. We have commands to be 4, negative 1, 3. It's actually doing with obstacles just so we can, you know, better understand the problem. So here we have 4, minus 1, 4, minus 2, 4. Is it necessary that it's always a, a move followed by a turn? It's not necessary. You could do two turns. Turn right, turn right. And the obstacles are, there's one at two comma four. So the robot starts at zero zero, moves to zero four, turns right, moves east one unit, and gets blocked by the obstacle at two four. The robot is at one four. It turns left, moves north to one eight. Okay, so if there's an obstacle in the way, then we cannot enter that specific position. I'm thinking it's possible that we maintain obstacles. So we maintain this large two by two array. Like what would the size of the array be? We don't know how big our grid actually is, do we? don't know how their grid is but all we really have to do is maintain a point of where the robot is at a given time because if you really think about it if we just maintain like a zero zero and if it's moving forward 10 units we go one zero check if there's an obstacle there two zero check and we just keep going. If there's no obstacle, we can make it all the way to 10, 0. For instance, somewhere in the middle, at around like 5, 0, there does exist an obstacle. We can say stop. And by stop, we just break out of that command. And we go to the next command. Right? And then we also have cases for which of the three commands it is. So, in fact, it should actually be a tuple but with three values the first two should be like the coordinates and the third should be the direction and for us the direction can be so we can do like one four if it's north or zero one two three right so it'd be zero 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 initially if it turns right it'd be zero zero one so we're still at that position we're just at index one this could be one way that we get to represent our data. And we're constantly asking these two values, seeing if they're comparing to an obstacle. Remember, obstacles don't inherently have um, a direction. They only have an X and Y coordinate. Compare it. If it does, we stop that command. We go to the next command. Perfect. All right. And then finally, at the end, we take whatever. So we'd have some kind of 
to five, six, and then we'd have a direction three, for instance. We take this and we return x squared plus y squared. We don't have to root it because they just want the maximum Euclidean distance. It's from the origin squared. So in the case of three comma four, just three squared plus four squared, which is 25. Let's try to type out the solution. Um, even though I'm not like 100% confident, knowing that I'm gonna inevitably run into a few bugs. Let's see if we can make it to the finish line. All right, so first, let's talk about a coordinate. Let's set it always to be zero, zero. I hope tuples could be three values. I'm pretty sure they can be. Um, so what could a command be? If command equals minus one, then we know that the bot has to turn right. Um, inside here, we want to say if if um, coordinate of two uh, equals or less than or equal to because we can't have it be four, right? Equal to two or less than three, pretty much. But if it is three, okay. If it's less than three, then I just want you doing coordinate of two plus equal one else the moment it's three we want to be setting to zero so I know what my indentation is a little weird here command minus two okay, coordinate of two equals zero that we don't want it going minus one All right so we just want to set coordinate two equals three three else coordinate of two minus equal one just to make it easier let's say if this is equal to three and we set this to be zero, else we just do plus equals one, All right? Accessing values of Python tuple. All right, use minus one. I'm assuming you can also use two, right? Yeah. Okay, so this should hopefully work. Now we have the case of else. So in any other case, we're gonna have some integer k, right? We have the integer k for i in range k We wanna move forward and then check if there's an obstacle there. Now we wanna check if there's an obstacle there. Obstacle like that and we're in that location right now, then you can't move forward. Otherwise, you can. So if, let's make a list representation out of coordinate zero, coordinate of one, in obstacles, then, I want to break out of the loop, right? It does break, exit, or loop. Otherwise, if coordinate of two equals zero, then we want our, our y value increasing by one. Coordinate of one plus equals one. Now if, let's copy this statement here. For 
for one, and then I want my X to increase by one. And let's copy this two more times. If we have coordinate of two equals two, then we want our Y to decrease by one. Can we go below zero, zero, by the way? I think we can. We just need to... There can be an obstacle in zero, zero, but we can go below zero, zero, two. Two equals equals three. Coordinate two. Coordinate of zero minus equals one. Yeah. And so after this, we should hopefully have the right um, coordinates. All we have to do is once you've exited out all the commands, return. So how do I square and coordinate of zero to the power of two plus coordinate of one to the power of two. Let's see how wrong we are. Okay. Where did we? I range. We don't have a K. What is K supposed to be? Um, so the command could just be a distance, right? Or I in range command. Tuple object does not support items. Can assign an item? How'd I do it here then? Oh, I guess we never. All right, you know what? Just to keep it easier, let me make it a list. All right. We got one right. 20 here, we expect 65 got zero for the third test case. All right, let's try and figure out why we got these wrong. Four negative one, four negative two, four. I want us to, just we have so many if conditions that I don't know where we could be going wrong. Print, let's first print out the coordinate. Two four, even though the resulting should be one eight, we somehow end up in two four. Uh, it's two four. I think what we're what's happening is when we break from here, we're breaking from the entire. We're breaking from there. So what we should be doing instead is just breaking from this world. Can literally just not do anything. Say not if coordinate. So if the direction is north and coordinate of zero plus coordinate of no, not plus, comma this plus one in not in obstacles then we're fine doing this and we got to repeat this a few more times so here the case is if coordinate of zero plus one here the case is if coordinate of zero here it's minus one here are the cases. And here we have minus one. For i in range six, if coordinate of two equals zero, which it should, if coordinate of zero and plus the this part we're moving to is not in obstacles, then we can 
increase it by one. Oh, we're coming back to zero, zero, aren't we? Oh, oh my god. It's meant to be the furthest point we ever get away from the origin. It's not where we end up, it's just the furthest point we get away. So after every iteration... So we need to keep hold of a max dist equals... Let's do negative infinity. Or let's do zero. It can never get below zero. If we see at the origin. Zero. And then after every... So only in cases where we're actually moving is the max distance changing, right? So here, if we went after all the movement happened, I'm just gonna test. No, we have to test it within the loop. Cause there's a chance. No, we don't have to. Cause we're only moving in one direction. I think it's fine if we test it out here. Max dist equals max of max dist comma uh, that. Now we just return here max dist. Hopefully that should. Oh, I hate it when it judges this long. Probably have a runtime error somewhere. I just don't know where. I will get exceeded. How do I even take care of this case? So I get that these values are like absurdly large. I doubt we're ever going to reach like 6,000. Um, how do I even... We have to go through all of this, don't we? There's literally no way otherwise for me to... I can't skip steps here. Well, like if there's several writes together, I just cancel them out. <laughs> okay. The one caveat, the one thing I did differently, was create a set out of um, all the obstacles. And sets allow for, or at least hash sets allow for a one look of time. So that's important to know. Sweet. Our memory did pretty well. Let me try rerunning it. See if we, yeah love to see it because I know our solution was good this is one caveat we we had to turn the obstacle set into a hash set so that our lookup time is greatly reduced in comparison to using the obstacle list and then doing lookup there which is way slower all right anyways thank you guys for watching hopefully this was a helpful video and everyone had something to take away from it there were a few new concepts we came across very taxing problem in terms of how much code we had to write but we got there at the end so uh hope you guys have a great rest of your day and i will see you later peace